have a brief executive session. We do not expect to reconvene the public meeting after the executive session. Uh, I would like to read the following notice uh, into the record. The meetings of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York are open to the public and the Board welcomes the interest of those who attend. The public has ample opportunity to communicate with the Board. Public hearings on the Board's policy calendar are scheduled one week prior to the Board's regular meetings, and members of the public who wish to communicate with the Board are invited to express their views at such public hearings. Furthermore, the Board holds additional public hearings each year in each of the five boroughs at which members of the public may speak. In addition, written communications to the Board are dis distributed to all trustees. Uh, the Board must carry out the functions assigned to it by law and therefore cannot tolerate conduct by members of the public that disrupts its meetings. In the event of disruptions, including noise, which interferes with Board discussion, after appropriate warning, I will ask the security staff to remove persons engaging in disruptive conduct. The University may seek disciplinary and or criminal sanctions against persons who engage in conduct that violates the university's rules or state laws which prohibit interference with the work of public bodies. May I now request that everyone take a moment to turn off your cell phones or, or Blackberries? Thank you. As usual, CUNY TV is transmitting the public sessions uh, of this board meeting live on cable channel 75. The meeting is also being webcast live and can be accessed by going to www.cuny.edu. The public session of this board meeting will be available as a podcast within 24 hours and can also be accessed via the CUNY website. On behalf of the board, I would like to thank Trustee Charles Shorter for representing CUNY at the Association of Governing Boards 2012 uh, Conference on Trusteeship in National Harbor, Maryland from April 22nd to April 24th. Uh, Trustee Shorter, uh, thank you for all you're doing uh, for the uh, AGB board. Uh, do you have anything uh, relevant to report to the board uh, that came out of the AGB conference? Uh, very briefly, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Association of Governing Boards of Colleges and Universities has approximately 1,800 <coughs> members. And the conference uh, last week included approximately 1,100 trustees and presidents from colleges and universities across the country. AGB is focused on the major issues and more importantly on solutions, innovative solutions to the problems facing higher education, including especially finance and uh, enrollment problems. And there's a great deal of focus on the public universities. Uh, we had at last week's session, for example, uh, Professor Clayton Christensen from the Harvard Business School, who was the author of Innovative Universities, and he gave a particularly stunning lecture on the modular university versus the interdependent university and the issues confronting uh, institutions such as CUNY, but uh, public colleges and universities across the country. Uh, to summarize, one of the things that I hope all of you and we know as members of AGB, they have tremendous resources available to us, uh, consulting resources, educational resources, board resources, and I hope you will avail yourself of them. It's a pretty uh, fantastic and uh, dedicated institution. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Trustee Shorter. Uh, may I also thank uh, Trustee Kathleen Pasilli 
for representing CUNY for the 12th year at its Big Apple Jobs Fair uh, on April 27th, held at the Javits Conference Center. Uh, this is a great program that brings CUNY students uh, into contact with prospective employers. Uh, and congratulations to Chancellor Goldstein on his appointment by Governor Cuomo today to the New York Education Reform uh, Commission. We look forward to your work uh, on that commission. I'd like to report that the board held its Staten Island Borough hearing on March 19, 2012. Trustee Kathleen Pacelli chaired the, the hearing that was also attended by Trustees Rita DiMartino, Kafui, Kuwaku, uh, and Sandy Cooper, members of the Chancellery and College of Staten Island President uh, Tomas Morales. The board held its Queensboro hearing on April 23, 2012. Trustee Valerie Beal chaired this hearing, which was also attended by Trustees Judah Grivitz, Kafui Kuaku, and Sandy Cooper, members of the Chancellery and the Queens College presidents and law school dean or their representatives. A summary of these proceedings has been circulated to the trustees and the Chancellor's cabinet and transcripts are available in the office of the Secretary. Our next uh, borough hearing will be held in the Bronx uh, on June 18, 2012 at Ostos Community College. I have great news from the CUNY Athletic Conference. We have four scholar athletes uh, with a GPA of 3.6 or above. They are three times All-American swimming and tennis champion, cross-country and track champion, Vladislav Romanov of the College of Staten Island, Mallory Grubler of Hunter's College women's volleyball team, Tenny Mbedu of, of Queensboro Community College men's soccer, and two times All-American cross-country and track champion, Xenia George, of Kingsboro uh, Community College. Let's give a hand to those. <laughs> May I now call on Trustee Valerie Beal to announce college and faculty honors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to four CUNY faculty members who were awarded Guggenheim Fellowships for their outstanding achievements. They are Bronx Community College Art and Music Professor Tom Chipolo and History Professor Dagmar Herzog, English Comparative Literature and American Studies Professor Joan Richardson, and Journalism Abjunct Member Yuriban Richman, all from the CUNY Graduate Center. Congratulations to Brooklyn College, City College, Hunter College and Queens College for being included in the 2012 Princeton Review Guide to 322 Green Colleges and to Queens College Professor Susan Kroll and Hunter College Professor Ava Livson for being included in the Princeton Review's The Best 300 Professors. Congratulations to Baruch College for being ranked among 2013 Best Graduate Schools by the U.S. News and World Report. Congratulations to Queens College Education and Community Programs Professor Nathalis Wamba for receiving a Fulbright Teaching and Research Fellowship. Congratulations to Brooklyn College Music Professor Tanya Leon who received a Sphinx Medal of Excellence at an award ceremony co-hosted by Justice Sotomayor and held at the U.S. Supreme Court. Congratulations to Hunter College Distinguished Professor of English, Peter Carey, who received the, Dobley, the Bobley Medal Award from the University of Oxford's Libraries, and to Hunter Anthropology Professor Emeritus John Oakes, who received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the International Primatology Society. Mr. Chairman, this concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Sandy Cooper would like to make an announcement. Thank you. 
I am pleased to announce that the Felix Gross Award handed out by the CUNY Academy of Humanities and Sciences, an organization affiliated with the University Faculty Senate and chartered by the trustees in 1980, has selected four faculty for its annual Felix Gross Award. They are Esther Allen of the Department of Modern Languages and Comparative Literature of Baruch College, Mande Holford of Chemistry at Hunter College, Mean Asen Doiran of Economics and Business at Lehman College, and Zachary Shirky of Political Science at Hunter College. The selection committee consisted of a group of four or five retired community college professors who selected these faculty from the senior colleges. The contest is open to faculty across the system. I've forgotten how many uh, submissions there were. It was somewhere in the nature of 40 or 50. The Academy also handed out over 100 William Stewart Travel Awards to assistant professors this year to help with research trips. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may I now call on Trustee Kathleen Pasilli to announce student and alumni honors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to four CUNY faculty members who were awarded Guggenheim Fellowships for their outstanding achievements. They are Bronx Community College art and music professor Tom Cipollio and history professor Dagmar Herzog, English comparative literature and American studies professor Joan Richardson, and journalism adjunct member Yoruba Rishan, all from the CUNY Graduate Center. Congratulations to the 16 students from across CUNY who have won National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowships. This is the highest number in CUNY history. No public university in the Northeast has more winners than CUNY. The students are Baruch College alumna Bellen Carolina Guerrera Carrillo, City College alumni Deborah Opeyemi Ayani, Teresa Lynn Karen Karanaza Fulmer, Charlie Cor Corridor, Zivi Herschel, Z uh, that's Zivi Herschel uh, Fishman, uh, Jamila Kaplan Kester, Christy Ann Scuhedo, Macaulay Honors College at City College alumni, Donald Wei, and Stephen Ma, and senior uh, Jae Sung Hung. Macaulay Honors College at Hunter College, seniors Vivian Francesca Balsadere and Vincent Shu, Hunter College senior Jamea Santillian, and alumna Carolina Salguero. Graduate Center doctoral student Andrew Goldclank Fulmer, and your college alumnus Kirk Donald Haltof Ter Hyde. Congratulations to the four students who have been awarded Jeanette K. Watson Fellowships. They are Andrea Monte Tokoga and Kwame Okran of Hunter College, and Kamalia Kilkwan and Michael Stivers of Baruch College. Congratulations also to Queens College senior Arika Leong, who received a Fulbright Teaching Fellowship. Congratulations in order to the team of City College public policy students, whose paper was picked as best policy of the year in a nationwide competition sponsored by the Roosevelt Institute. Congratulations to 14 Medgar Evers College Biology and Environmental Science students who presented posters at the Eastern College Science Conference at William Patterson University. Congratulations to Kingsborough Community College alumnus LaVar Thomas, now a junior at Clark University, who is selected to participate in the 2012 Ralph Bunch Summer Institute at Duke University. Congratulations to Baruch College Masters in Financial Engineering students who took first and fourth place in the annual Rothman International Trading Competition. 
And finally, congratulations to Macaulay Honors College at Hunter College senior, David Weinberg, who has been chosen as the 2012-2013 New York City Urban Fellow. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, you have a list of grants and gifts received by the university subsequent to the February 27th, 2012 meeting. Uh, it's at the table and in your trustees' calendar book. I'd like now to call on Chancellor Goldstein to present his report. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me start uh, with the state budget, uh, which I've reported on before, but um, I have a, a few extra items that uh, I'd like to embed into my uh, prior comments about this budget. Uh, at the end of March, Governor Cuomo and the leaders of the New York State Legislature reach an agreement on the fiscal 2013 operating and capital budgets. I would only remind you that uh, when this board approved the five-year tuition plan, uh, when uh, the law on uh, the tuition plan was amended to require that both CUNY and SUNY maintain the revenue that they collect uh, from tuition, and uh, probably the most important component uh, of the plan, the maintenance of effort, uh, those three items will give us uh, stability over the next several years uh, outside of the uh, remote possibility of a, an unforeseen uh, Four Sigma uh, event. Uh, so I think uh, we are in, in pretty good shape uh, going forward, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, and uh, with uh, our philanthropy uh, increasing at uh, really spectacular rates and other entrepreneurial activities operating at the university, there is uh, serious revenue that is now coming into the university that will help us immeasurably over the next uh, few years. Specifically on the operating side for the senior colleges, the adopted budget maintains the, the executive's recommendation of slightly under $71 million in additional state aid and the recognition of a little over $66 million in increased tuition revenue. The adopted budget also includes a million dollars for the Clean CUNY Leads Program, which provides academic and career counseling, as well as internship and job placement assistance to our students with disabilities. For the community colleges, the adopted budget increases the base aid by $150 per FTE student up to 2722. This will generate an additional $12.2 million in state aid for our community colleges in the next fiscal year. In addition, the 12, FY12 legislative increase of a little over a half a million dollars for child care that was not included uh, is now, has now been restored. I reported that we were successful uh, in getting uh, monies for adjunct health insurance, which was a real priority for us, and uh, we are looking into the possibilities now of how we can extend those kinds of benefits uh, uh, a little further, and uh, we will be considering those ideas uh, over the next several weeks. With the, um, with, with the multi-year opportunities uh, presented to us, especially at the community colleges, I've directed our, uh, our chancellery to work with our presidents and faculties across the university to come up with very bold plans uh, to really uh, uh, inject uh, revenues of significance into our community colleges that will enable them to do the kinds of things that we aspire to do but have never had the revenue in the past uh, to accomplish those goals. With respect to our capital needs, the state adopted budget maintains the executive recommendation of about $284 million in appropriations for critical maintenance projects at the senior colleges 
and a little under $27 million in appropriations for community college projects that have received city funding. The budget also includes $37 million for capital program related operating expenses incurred by the dormitory authority of the state of New York and the city uh, university construction fund. I'm pleased also to say that after relentless uh, discussions, uh, we appear to be successful in getting a dry appropriation to start our New York City College of Technology academic building that has been in design now for several years, but uh, we've never been able to start the project because we have not had it fully funded. But we work with the division of the budget, and uh, we will get that uh, going, uh, and uh, delighted that uh, we could uh, see that um, happening. Obviously, we're continuing to pursue capital budget enhancements uh, over the uh, rest of uh, the year. The adopted budget also includes legislation uh, directing both CUNY and SUNY to conduct a study on student remediation, which will include various factors, including strategies and programs recognized to be effective in addressing the needs of remedial students and promoting successful transition to college readiness, efforts to support a student's transfer from colleges that offer associate's degrees to colleges that offer baccalaureate degrees, and methods for improving post-secondary uh, completion rates. In addition, the legislature directs the uh, boards of both CUNY and SUNY to examine the laws, regulations, and policies regarding community college charges for non-resident students. I've had uh, several conversations with uh, Chancellor Zimfer uh, of the SUNY system to coordinate our responses on both these um, activities. The mayor will release his executive budget on Thursday, May 3rd, uh, this week. We are working with both the mayor's office and the city council on our priorities. I would like to thank Presidents Carol Burrow-Joseph, uh, Associate Vice uh, Chancellor Matthew Sapienza, Senior University Dean John Mogulescu, and Director Richard Alvarez for testifying before the New York City Higher Education Committee last week on CUNY preparations to meet student enrollment needs for the coming academic year. I'm pleased to uh, announce, and you've seen this uh, widely in the press, that CUNY is one of the universities partnering with New York University on the Applied Science Initiative announced by the mayor last week in Brooklyn. The Center for Urban Science and Progress is a public-private research center that will use New York City as its lab and classroom to create products and services that will enable cities around the world to be more productive, livable, and resilient. The consortium of academic and industry partners includes not only NYU and NYU Poly, but uh, Carnegie Mellon University, the Indian Institute of Technology in Bombay, the University of Toronto, and the University of Warwick. We also have industry partners including IBM, Cisco, Siemens, Con Edison, National Grid, Xerox, AROP, IDEO, and AECOM. CUSP, which is the acronym, will focus on research and development of technology to address the critical challenges facing cities, including infrastructure, technology integration, energy efficiency, transportation congestion, public safety, and public health. I would like to publicly thank uh, Vice Chancellor Gillian Small, who really led the effort in representing CUNY in this important uh, effort. And so thank you, uh, Gillian, for your very able work. With respect to the CUNY Master Plan, the 2012 through 2016 Master Plan, which is my intention to bring to the board for its review and uh, hopeful approval, 
we are uh, in the process of collecting many uh, pieces of suggestions and recommendations throughout uh, the CUNY committee, and I want to thank many of the trustees who have uh, commented on the plan. Uh, as I indicated, this will be reviewed by an outside um, uh, entity to give a, a perspective on how other major universities would look at what we are planning to do. In recent years, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, the university reaffirmed its commitment to transformative change to ensure that diversity and inclusion remain central to our core academic values. Several years ago, to provide greater focus on recruiting and retaining a diversified, a diverse full-time faculty and staff, we established the Office of University Dean for Recruitment and Diversity. In addition, the innovative programs established as part of the Chancellor's diversity initiatives attest to our continuing efforts to enhance faculty diversity. To continue building on our successes, last year I appointed a diversity study steering committee and asked Cambridge Hill Partners, a consulting firm with extensive experience in the areas of diversity and strategic planning in higher education, to work with Vice Chancellor uh, Ginger Waters and Dean Jennifer Rubain to assess CUNY's recruitment and retention challenges and opportunities. Their efforts resulted in the completion of a study that identified best practices to recruit and retain faculty and promote inclusion. This diversity action plan was prepared by the Ad Hoc Committee on Strengthening Faculty Diversity, a committee composed of trustees, members of the chancellery, presidents and faculty, and student representatives. In her report to the board tonight, Trustee Valerie Beal will share with you some of the pertinent points of the plan, which is entitled Building on a Strong Foundation, a strategy for enhancing CUNY's leadership in the areas of faculty diversity and inclusion. Now and in the years to come, CUNY has a critical role to play in advancing diversity and inclusion on national and even international levels. The Diversity Action Plan outlines a comprehensive approach to strengthening the university's leadership role. I am confident that we will, we will be showing unwavering support of the campuses as we move to successfully implement some of these important recommendations. I would like to alert the board that the Community Counseling Services uh, 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 organization chaired by David Jones is about to release a report uh, that I took some strenuous uh, exceptions to. I met with uh, Mr. Jones, we met with uh, his staff, uh, and that report is uh, presently being circulated. We have prided ourselves at this university in acting as a integrated university. The number of undergraduates that are of African American descent has increased by 6.6 percent over the last decade, and the percentage of undergraduates that are of Hispanic descent has increased almost 41 percent at this university. I would say these numbers are extraordinarily impressive. And not only are the numbers increasing in dramatically uh, uh, fast ways, but we're graduating many more students that are of Hispanic and, um, and black heritage. The report that uh, the community counseling, uh, the community um, uh, services society uh, is about to produce has only looked at the years 2009 through 2010, which was a recession, a deep recession 
uh, in the city and uh, in the United States. I think it is uh, famously flawed. Uh, I think the idea that we are able to start students at our community colleges who are not able to get into our senior colleges and then successfully get their baccalaureate degree is a badge of honor for us. So I just wanted to alert the board that that report is going to be coming out. And if any of you have questions with respect to the data, please uh, contact me or uh, one of the vice chancellors and we'll uh, try to help in getting you to understand this uh, better than we do. Uh, the CUNY Daily News uh, Citizenship Now call-in was conducted last week beginning with a launch last uh, Monday, April 23rd, with Senator Charles Schumer, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, uh, Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver, Publisher Maud Zuckerman, Zuckerman, New York State Senator Adriana Espayad, and New York City Council Member Idanis Rodriguez. This year, a total of 12,571 people were served through this latest call-in in the nation that assists New, York's, New Yorkers obtain access to citizenship and naturalization. The 10-year total is an amazing 109,873 people served. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg, City Council Speaker Christine Quinn, Public Advocate Bill de Blasio, most of the borough presidents and other business leaders and government officials visited the call-in, which was held for the first time at CUNY's new community college. We owe a special debt of gratitude, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, to the over 400 volunteers from CUNY colleges immigrant organizations, and law firms all over New York City. This idea was the brainchild of our own Senior Vice Chancellor, Jay Hershenson, who has been indefatigable in convincing me this was the right thing to do. And uh, kudos to Professor Alan Wernick, uh, who has really been Extraordinary in making this important public uh, service um, uh, available uh, to all. Uh, I was pleased to participate in the second annual CUNY Philanthropy Forum that took place today at uh, the CUNY Graduate Center. Today's forum builds on the success of the Invest in CUNY campaign the university's inaugural fundraising effort that was launched in 2004. Since then, the colleges of CUNY have raised close to $2.2 billion in private funds and are committed to exceeding our ambitious goal of $3 billion by 2015. I'm deeply proud. I'm deeply proud and grateful for the success that our presidents, our volunteers, our faculties, and loyal alumni have achieved to date. There were over 200 attendees, including college presidents, advancement professionals, alumni officers, academic leaders, finance staff, and grants officers from all our 24 institutions, as well as many CUNY friends, including alumni, grantors, and volunteer leaders. Speaking of philanthropy, I'd like to congratulate President Lisa Stagnano Koiko on the recent $10 million gift from Martin and Michelle Cohen to City College's Division of Science. Lisa, that's a great <laughs> um, Martin called me uh, a couple of days ago and he said, Matthew, not, not too bad from a kid from the Bronx. So Lisa, congratulations on doing that. I am pleased to announce that last week the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency awarded Sustainable CUNY the prestigious 2012 Environmental Quality Award for its effort to support large-scale 
Solar Adoption as Lead for the New York City Solar American City, City, City Partnership. Each year, the EPA honors those who have demonstrated an outstanding commitment to protecting and enhancing environmental quality and public health. The partnership comprising CUNY, the Mayor's Office of Long-Term Planning and Sustainability, and the New York City Economic Development Corporation won a grant from the U.S. Department of Energy through the American Recovery and the Reinvestment Act to design and build the New York City solar map as part of a comprehensive solar plan for New York City. Additional funding was provided by the City of New York and the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority with technical support provided by Con Edison. Special accommodations should be given to Deputy Chief Operating Officer Ron Spalter and our Director of Sustainability, Tria Case, who led this important effort for CUNY. I'd also like to congratulate Vice Chair Berry and Mrs. Karen Berry, who received the Forging Partnership Award at the Shared Interest 18th Annual Anniversary Awards for their work in support of microfinancing efforts in South Africa. <laughs> Kudos also to Senior Vice Chancellor and Board Secretary Jay Hershenson, who received the Legacy Award by the Hispanic Federation at their gala on April 19th. And boy, was that a party for those of you who didn't go. Make sure you go next year. Also, uh, kudos to Vice Chancellor Iris Weinshaw, who was awarded with the Ostos Person of the Year Award at Ostos Community College Annual Gala. And kudos to Vice Chancellor Frank Sanchez on his appointment to the Bill and Melinda Gates Millennium Scholars Advisory Board. I also wish to congratulate President Carol Barot-Joseph, who was honored by the Caribbean American Chamber of Commerce and Industry at their annual Salute to Women History Makers event, and to President Jeremy Travis, who was recently named by the National Research Council of the National Academies to serve as chair of, of a committee on the causes and consequences of high rates of incarceration in America. Kudos to you, Jeremy. That's a, quite a prestigious appointment. Also to President Jennifer Rabb, who received the Miriam N. Netter Award as the keynote speaker at the 18th annual Kate Stoneman Day at Albany Law School. The award is presented in honor of Kate Stoneman, the first woman admitted to practice law in New York State and the first female graduate of Albany Law School in 1898. And lastly, uh, congratulations to President Regina Perugi on Kingsborough Community College selection again as one of the nation's 120 best community colleges by the Aspen Institute College Excellence Program. This distinction allows Kingsborough Community College to compete for a $1 million, uh, a $1 million in prize monies, which will be announced, I believe, next year, uh, March of 2013. And lastly, um, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, on a more uh, uh, serious and uh, a difficult thing for me uh, to have to deal with. Uh, I was truly appalled, disturbed, and quite frankly, totally perplexed by the action taken by the College of Staten Island uh, Senate la uh, last March, uh, a month ago. Uh, where a no-confidence vote was uh, placed for deliberation on the floor of the Faculty Senate at the College of Staten Island. Not only do I strenuously deal, uh, disagree with those who voted affirmatively, 
But I am amazed that a Senate body that prides itself on process would stoop to an action that violates the most basic premise of collegial discourse. One needs to take very seriously actions taken that can tarnish a president's, a president's reputation. And from where I sit, members of the board, I think Tomas Morales has been an exemplar of a president. He has been bold, courageous. He has helped to recruit a coterie of extraordinary faculty during the time of his tenure. He got a residence hall moving at the College of Staten Island, the first in its history, the High Performance Computing Center, which is going to be the place where very advanced computing is going to be done in this university, and the list goes on. I want the board to know that I support Tomas Morales without exception, and want you to know, Tomas, that uh, I look forward to you being a good colleague with me and the rest of us here at uh, the City University in the years to come. That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Are there questions, Trustee Morales? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I strongly support President Tomas Morales. For the record, we have the same name, Morales, but we are not family. <laughs> I strongly support him because of the extraordinary way he has reached out beyond the campus gate to involve the community as never before. Under his leadership, student enrollment are soaring. Students are winning major awards. And his announcement of plans for a resident hall are just three samples of many ways that the college is moving forward. Mr. Chairman, one more moment, I want to say something. We very often do things that are not properly recognized. The activity that we have in Albany, it was outstanding. I had never seen my years of more than 40 years of participating in political process from White House to Albany, seeing so many important politicians gather in one room talking about CUNY by Chancellor Jerry Hessenson and Chancellor Matthew Gorton, <clears throat> who had an outstanding ovation. I want to say for the record that I express my gratitude my, ad my admiration for the work that they are doing, not only in the field of education, but also health, immigration, business, and so on and so forth. I always say that CUNY is the heart of New York City. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to say, I know I speak on behalf of the entire board, that when Trustee Basile's committee recommended uh, finalists for the College of Staten Island, that the Chancellor and I were both extraordinarily impressed with the whole field that was uh, recommended and felt that Tomas Morales stood out head and shoulders. And I believe his accomplishments since he became uh, the president uh, of the College of Staten Island have more, more than borne out our highest hopes uh, for his leadership. So the board stands strongly with our chancellor uh, in, their, uh, in their view, without qualification. Mr. Chair, just 
briefly, um, I was on the search committee uh, when President Morales was selected, and uh, I just remember that the challenge that we gave him uh, to lead the College of Staten Island, and, and he has done an incredible job there. I'm astounded, as astounded as the chancellor, you know, about uh, what, what occurred at, that, uh, at the Senate. I, I just feel that we owe him just a round of, of thanks. We have given it to him. Um, you, President Morales, you have done a, a wonderful job there, and, and you work incredible hours, but, but it's not just working the hours. You are extremely dedicated, uh, and you have taken it to a whole nother level. So I just uh, applaud and salute your efforts. Here, here. here. Salute. Yes. Everyone, please know that I and Trustee uh, DiMartino are in complete support of President Morales. From the outset of our efforts on the uh, search committee to hire him five years ago, we met with uh, great opposition uh, from people at the College of Staten Island. And it's very important to know that he has not only maintained a commitment to the people of Staten Island, but it's sincere and it goes deep. He's very engaged. I find him on committees in the community that I am on and the feedback that I get is phenomenal. He is sincere, he's honest, he tells it like it is, and he has made the students of CSI very important to the community. We are not the college of last resort on Staten Island. We are in the forefront, and we will be even better once we have the student residences. People will put in reservations, and I'm sure faculty will as well. And uh, I think we should continue to support him wholeheartedly. He's done a phenomenal job. And Tomas, you're not finished yet. This is just the beginning. Thank you very much. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to make a few brief comments on this topic, and I'd like to put it in a little bit more of a context than just what I perceive to have been an injustice to President Morales. I think it's deeply troubling when a robust debate about an academic subject, in this case the Pathways Initiative, uh, turns into an unpleasant disagreement involving uh, motions of no confidence, litigation, protest, and the like. I'm not going to speak here today in defense of the Pathways Initiative. I supported it, continue to support it. My support is built on studying it and worrying about it and thinking about it, and I thank the faculty who have both supported it and I thank the faculty who have opposed it, because we have learned from both the importance of the subject and the importance of the focus that we are putting on it. Why am I concerned about this vote of no confidence in addition to the personal aspects about President Morales? And I identify and, and support the remarks made prior. First of all, I believe it violates a core concept of the university. Um, the chancellor gave a an incredible summary about the diversity efforts in this university. We are diverse. We reflect the city, which is the most diverse city in the world, and our population in the university reflects that diversity, including the student body, faculty, administrative, staff, and trustees. But diversity is just not about race, gender, or ethnicity. A truly great university has all of that, or it won't be great. A truly great university, however, has one other thing and that is a respect for diversity of ideas and a respect for ideas that are diverse from our own. A university comprised of people who agree with each other on every issue would be an intellectual wasteland at best and an ideological gulag at worst. Are we a university that has lost the ability to engage in robust public debate without personal attacks, whether they be ad hominem or professional? Much has been made about the opposition to pathways. I know about the petition. We're going to hear apparently or see about the petition. I need to be clear. There's a principle at play here, and that's that intelligence and sincere opposition to elements of any initiative are always welcome. I have welcomed them and have received numerous messages that were very well thought out and some that were simply off base and not particularly well thought out. But the point is the faculty engaged and continue to engage and that's not bad. It's also violative, in addition to our, con our concept of diversity, this very notion of a motion of no confidence is violative of the concept that is touted by many of shared governance. 
On the time that I've been on this board, I've heard, repeatedly heard elected faculty representatives assert every single time that we disagree with them that we are rejecting the notion of shared governance. Whether we disagree or agree does not affect shared governance. The dialogue and the effect of the dialogue is what shared governance is about. The ultimate rejection, Mr. Chairman, in my view, of shared governance is the invocation of a third party, in this case the power of the state, in litigation to attempt to impose a solution when one failed to negotiate the solution that one preferred. President Morales, you have done a great job. Your bio says a lot about you, but it doesn't say how far you've come, the distance you have traveled, both academically and personally. So for the effective, innovative leadership at the College of Staten Island, you know this board supports you. For a life spent overcoming obstacles as a Hispanic in the academic community and truly a pioneering Hispanic, this board supports you. For bearing with grace and dignity the indignity of having 13 faculty members vote in favor of a motion for no confidence, this board supports you. <coughs> Finally, I want you to know that the endorsement you received by acclamation was indeed unanimous and accurately and completely reflects the opinion of this board. We should agree and we should disagree, but we should do so with respect for the human dignity of the people with whom we are debating. I believe that was violated in this case, and I share the comments of Chairman Schmidt and Chancellor Goldstein and the, my fellow trustees in that regard. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other comments about the Chancellor's report? I would just like to note three things about it. If you can't be quiet and let us proceed with our business, I will ask the security staff to show you out. You're not on your way out. I would like to. We can proceed now. I would, I would like to note, I would like to thank and take note of the maturity and the sense of responsibility of the students who are communicating their views in ways that do not disrupt our meetings. I can assure you that your views are being taken into account by all the trustees, and it is in light of the previous discussion, a remarkable fact that the students here are acting with vastly more maturity and sense of responsibility than the faculty uh, of the university. Or, no, I misspoke. Not the faculty of the university. You saw about 1%, if that, of the faculty of the university at this meeting. That does not represent the faculty of this university. That's who was elected. Um, any other comments for the chancellor on his report? 
Uh, if not, we'll proceed to policy items that require a vote. Uh, I would like to move the adoption of the Chancellor's University Report for April 30th, 2012. You have a copy uh, of the report uh, uh, at the table. May I have a second? Second, Mr. Chair. Is there any uh, uh, comment or question about the report? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? The report is adopted. Uh, I would also like to move the approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting and the executive session of February 27, 2012. You have a copy of the draft minutes uh, in your meeting books. May I have a second? Second, Mr. Chair. Uh, are there any revisions or, or comments on the minutes? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed abstentions? The minutes are adopted. We'll now move to the reports of our committees. I'd like to call on Committee Chair uh, Joe Lauda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Committee on Fiscal Affairs and the Subcommittee on Investment met in a joint session on April 2, 2012. After approval of the minutes of the meeting held on February 6, the committee approved the following resolution. Calendar item 3A is the resolution to authorize the General Counsel to execute up to four contracts on behalf of John Jay Community College, uh, excuse me, John Jay College of Criminal oh, Justice. Thank you. I apologize. Thank you. To provide. I, I, I'm so sorry. I should read. No. To provide services for the New York City Justice Corps, the initial term shall be two years and the contract shall include up to two one-year options for the university to renew uh, in its best interest. Such purchase shall not exceed a total estimated cost for both years of $8.8 .8 million, uh, and it will be it will use funds allocated by the City of New York to the City University of New York. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3A. I'll second that. Are there questions on the John Jay uh, uh, procurement? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That passes. Calendar item 3B is a resolution requesting that the Board of Trustees of the University authorize the granting of tuition waivers for student participants in the City University Career Path Program effective May 1, 2012. A consortium of eight university colleges were awarded a United States Department of Labor Trade Adjustment Assistance Community College and Career Training Grant of $19.86 million. Since the grant does not allow uh, to pay, does not allow to pay for tuition, the consortium is requesting approximately $2 million in waivers over the three-year term of the grant. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3B. Uh, I'll second uh, that item. Are there questions for the committee on the PATH uh, waiver? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? That carries. Calendar item 3C is a resolution to authorize the General Counsel to execute a contract on behalf of the College of Staten Island to purchase bus services to transport its student, staff, faculty from the ferry terminal to the campus along a two-and-a-half-mile loop uh, on, on the campus and to and from sporting events. Such purchase shall not exceed a total estimated cost of $1.8 million per year. Mr. Chairman, I move the adoption uh, and approval of calendar item 3C. I'll second the item. Are there questions on the uh, bus uh, transportation service? Mr. Chairman, I must uh, uh, abstain from this vote. All right. Uh, the motion has been uh, uh, put and seconded. Are there questions or comments? If not, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? One abstention noted. That carries. Thank you. Calendar item 3D, in accordance with university's investment policy, Appendix B, spending policy, Section 1, uh, spending decisions, um, CUNY funds, last paragraph, the board approves the recommendation of the Subcommittee on Investment authorizing funds uh, for annual expenditure from the portfolio at, at a rate at or below 4.5 percent of the portfolio's average market value. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3D. Uh, I'm happy to second this conservative, uh, fiscally conservative uh, resolution. Are there questions for the committee? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 
Any opposed? Abstentions? That carries. Following the approval of action item A, B, and C by the committee, Associate Vice Chancellor Matthew Sapienza gave an update on the fiscal year 2012-2013 New York State adopted budget. Following the Associate Vice Chancellor's report, the Subcommittee on Investment was convened. After approval of the minutes of the Subcommittee meeting held on February 23, 2012, University Chief Investment Officer Janet Crone reported on the university's investment portfolio. Upon completion of the investment update, the committee proceeded to conduct uh, the spending deliberations in accordance with state statute known as uh, NIPMIFA uh, for fiscal year 2013. A motion ensued and the subcommittee approved authorizing funds for annual expenditure from the portfolio at a rate at or below 4.5 percent of the portfolio's average market value. This item, which was item 3D in today's uh, calendar, was approved for submission to the board. Mr. Chairman, this concludes my report. Thank you, uh, Trustee Loder. We'll turn next to the Committee on Academic uh, Policy Programs and Research. I'd like to call on uh, Trustee Wellington Chen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this April 2, 2012 meeting, the committee approved the following policy matters. Calendar number 4A. Application to register the MS in Geographic Information Science at Lehman College. This program will enable students to develop research skills in spatial analysis and will be attractive to professionals working in the fields of public health, environmental science, and resource management. The program will also be attractive to tra a traditional student with an undergraduate degree from a variety of science, technology, engineering, or mathematics disciplines. One track fulfills the requirements within the framework of the National In Initiative for Professional Science Master's degrees, focusing specifically on preparing students for advanced practice and management positions. And the other track prepares students for study beyond the master's, such as CUNY's PhD program in Earth and Environmental Sciences. Calendar number 4B, application to register the MS in Earth Systems and Environmental Engineering at City College. This program integrates traditional science and engineering disciplines with overall goal of training students to solve the contemporary environmental problems. Similar to the previous proposal, this program also fulfills the requirement of a professional science master's degree. It also includes an internship and training in the workplace skills, such as regulatory affairs and project management, the free tracks, water resource engineering management, climate and remote sensing, and geoinformatics and geoinformation systems were selected as, as the workforce areas most likely to sustain high demand for qualified employees. Calendar number 4C, application to register the MA in branding and integrated communications at City College. This graduate program integrates advertising management, creative development, and public relations to promote an integrated interdisciplinary approach to creating brand identity. The program prepares graduates for planning and executing effective campaigns across a wide range of media, equipping them for careers in a variety of jobs in not-for-profit and for-profit marketing communications. Calendar number 4D, application to register both the MS and the BS in biotechnology at City College. These two programs build on existing recognized strengths in natural sciences at City College, the programs are designed to prepare students for career entry or advancement in biotechnology in settings such as pharmaceutical industry and medical and academic research laboratories. Biotechnology remains a fast-growing field <coughs> excuse me, uh, in the greater New York area as well as nationwide. Offering affordable degrees in this field fulfills a need for qualified workforce and providing students with a competitive edge. Calendar number 4E. Application to register the BS in Biomedical Informatics at New York City College, New York City Technical College. This innovative program, the first of its kind at CUNY, will equip students with the technical skills and knowledge needed to process biological and biomedical data used in pharmacology, healthcare, and biomedical research. Students will have a range of career options from entry level employment to continuing on to graduate or professional school. The curriculum is consistent with the current standards in the field and will prepare students for graduate studies. Calendar number 4F, resolution to confer honorary degrees at Brooklyn College. 
the CUNY School of Law, Lehman College, the Graduate School and University Center, John Jay College, Bernard Baruch College, and the Macaulay Honors College. For this meeting of the Board of Trustees, a new procedure has been instituted for the approval of college requests to confer honorary degrees. For approval of each honorary degree candidate, there are four steps. Number one, review of the candidate and submission of the nomination by the college to the chancellor. Number two, review of the candidate by the chancellor's office and submission of the nomination to the Board Committee on Academic Policy Programs and Research. Number three, review of the candidate's information and recommendation of the candidate by CAPRA. Number four, review of the candidate's information and final approval by the full Board of Trustees. As the culmination of these four steps, the following candidate for honorary degrees are before you today. Brooklyn College wishes to confer the honorary Doctor of Humane Letters upon Sylvia Mendes, the American civil rights activist, the honorary Doctor of Science upon Anthony Fauci, Director of National Institute of Allergy and Inf Infectious Diseases, and the honorary Doctor of Fine Arts upon Cecil Taylor, the pianist and poet. The CUNY Law School wishes to confer the honorary degree the Doctors of Laws upon Ronald Ellis, a U.S. Magistrate Judge. Dikang Lesenke, the Deputy Chief Justice of South Africa, and Rahika Komarasami, the United Nations and Under Secretary General. Lehman College <coughs> wishes to confer the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters upon Shirley Rodriguez Romaneski, Chairperson, Bronx Lebanon Hospital Board of Trustees, and President of 100 Hispanic Women. Karen Musalo, President of Law, University of California, Hastings College of Law, and Albert Carey, Chief Executive Officer of PepsiCo. The Graduate School and University Center wishes to confer the honorary Doctor of Humane Letters upon Marianne Goodman, the International Art Gallerist, and upon Philip Levine, the U.S. Poet Laureate. John Jay College wishes to confer the honorary degree upon Judith Jamison, Artist Director Emerita, Alvin Ailey, American Dance Theater. The Honorary Doctor of Laws upon Michael Melster, Distinguished University Professor at Northeastern University of Law, School of Law, and on Michael Perlin, Professor of Law, New York Law School. Baruch College wishes to confer the Honorary Doctors of Letters upon David Brooks, columnist of the New York Times, and the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters upon Louis Capelli, Baruch Class of 58, and Chairman of Sterling National Bank. The Macaulay Honors College wishes to confer the honorary Doctor of Humane Letters upon Mel uh, Tisch, the Chancellor of New York State Board of Regents. Mr. Chairman, item 4A through 4F were approved by the committee and recommend the approval by the board. I am happy to second uh, that resolution. Are there questions for the board on any of the items? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, that carries. Anything further to report, Trustee Chen? No, that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. We'll turn next to the Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration. I'd like to call on Trustee Valerie Beal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am pleased to present for the Board's consideration the matters that the Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration reviewed at its meeting on April 2nd, 2012. Item 5A names two rooms in the library at Queensborough Community College as the Senator Frank Paverman Archives, Paverman, I'm sorry, Paterman, and the Senator Frank Paterman Archives Annex. From 1972 to 2010, Senator Padovan represented the borough of Queens, 11th District. His Senate papers document his service as a principal architect of legislation on a variety of issues, including mental health advocacy, economic reform, crime, terrorism, and education. The Senator has donated his Senate papers to Queensborough Community College and the college will preserve them and provide access to scholars and community members. The Board Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration recommends approval of this naming. Mr. Chair, I present item 5A for the Board's consideration. 
I'll second it. Any discussion? Yeah. Yes. I, I just think it, that uh, Senator Padovan deserves extra mention. I'm sure many on, in the chancellery will agree, certainly Jay. Uh, you know, sometimes today, the, not always, but many times the standards for public officials have become quite low. And Senator Frank Padovan is an exceptional individual, totally dedicated to his work over the years. But he's also extremely talented, an archaeologist, uh, someone that uh, put his heart and soul into the legislature. He was very dedicated to City University uh, in, in the years that we made the trip up to Albany. We visited him constantly. He fielded and took uh, programs and uh, disbursements everything that was necessary for the budget of Sydney University, he fielded. He's an exceptional, exceptional individual, a great American patriot, military man, and uh, he is really an exemplar, not just uh, in terms of recognizing him, but for the students of this university to look in who, who is Frank Padovan, a very special man. Good. Thank you very much for your commentary. Any other comments? All in favor? Opposed abstentions? Okay. Next item. Thank you. Item 5B names the conference room in the student government office at John Jay College of Criminal Justice as the Drs. Ruby and James Malone Student Government Conference Room. The college wishes to honor these long standing members of the John Jay community for their decades of service to the college and its students and in recognition, in recognition of their establishment of a $100,000 endowed scholarship for John Jay students. The Board Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration is pleased to recommend approval of this naming. Mr. Chair, I present item 5B for the Board's consideration. Thank you very much. I'll move it. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you, it carries. Next item. Thank you. Item 5C pertains to a proposed change to the governance plan of the City College of New York to increase the flexibility of the college ombudsman election process. The amendment requires the Faculty Senate to make a good faith effort to find two candidates, but allows for one candidate if those efforts do not yield two candidates. Mr. Chair, I present item 5C for the board's consideration. Thank you very much. I'll move it. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much. That carries. Thank you. Next item. And now I'd like to add my thoughts to the Chancellor's remark about the Diversity Action Plan, which Vice Chancellor Waters and Dean Jennifer Rubain shared with the committee in great detail at our meeting on April 2nd. I had the opportunity to work very closely with Vice Chancellor Waters and Dean Rubain on this initiative and wish to recognize their diligent efforts along with those of the members of the ad hoc committee on strengthening faculty diversity on which I was privileged to serve. The, the, uh, commit, the action plan includes developing the diversity action plan involved months of research, analysis, and in-depth discussions with interested parties throughout our university community. The plan strategies are designed to promote a supportive work environment and an inclusive university community which are essential to organizational excellence. The plan considers diversity and, inclusive, and inclusion systematically as well on the campus level and addresses the opportunities available to increase faculty diversity and promote inclusion. The plan acknowledges the impact that certain governance rules may have on achieving diversity goals and allows the campus to develop solutions within their own framework. And I'd just like to note a particular interest of mine was just how the, um, the role of the committee ch chairs in the selection process and how that may or may not thwart diversity. And I appreciate Dr. the Chancellor and uh, the Vice Chancellor for looking into that process. It also ensures that diversity continues to be a priority because of its elevated standing within the PMPs. 
The City University of New York has a history of developing innovative diversity enterprises such as the Black Male Initiative. Equally significant are the successes of existing programs aimed at diversifying the, the professional staff as well as the, prof the staff of uh, professors, including the Latino Faculty Recruitment Initiative, the Decade of the Science with its Stella Women in Science component, the Diversity Projects Development Fund, and the Faculty Fellowship <laughs> Publications Program. The Diversity Action Plan builds on those successes by creating new postdoctoral fellow and scholar in residence programs, which will allow us to leverage the benefits of a university-wide system. I believe that the CUNY Diversity Action Plan provides the impetus for renewed thinking energy and action devoted to the recruiting and hiring of talented and diverse faculty in all disciplines. I urge each of you to read and review its recommendations and to join me in committing ourselves to sustaining and enhancing CUNY's role as one of the most diverse institutions of higher education in the nation. Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll turn next to the Committee on Student Affairs and Special Programs. I'd like to call on Trustee <coughs> Kathleen Pasilli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Committee on Student Affairs and Special Programs has one item for the Board's approval. The Committee met on April 2, 2012, and approved the following calendar item. Calendar item 6A, New Community College, Establishment of the College Association, and an initial student activity fee. The new community college desires to organize a college association to administer student activity fee funds consistent with other colleges at CUNY. The college seeks approval of the initial certificate of incorporation and bylaws of the new corporation. The college also desires to set an initial student activity fee to support a full range of extracurricular activities pursuant to Section 16.2 of the bylaws. Without student government in, governance in place, the fee is being brought forward to the board at the recommendation of the president of the college and with the support of the vice chancellor for student affairs. This process follows the 1983 precedent when the new law school interim fee was established. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 6A. Uh, thank you very much. Do you need a resolution to approve the Community College Association? No. No. Uh, we'll turn next. Thank you very much. We'll turn next to the Committee on Facilities Planning and Management. I'd like to call on Trustee Frieda Foster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The following two resolutions came in too late for prior review at the Board of Trustees Committee on facilities planning and management meetings that was scheduled for April 2nd. Therefore, they are being bought before the Board of Trustees today for consideration. The first one is Queens College is a lease renewal for Queens College. To authorize a 15-year lease renewal for the space uh, at 154-1165th Avenue in Flushing, New York, the current lease expired on February 29th. This building is known as Casena Hall and has been occupied by Queens College since the mid-60s as space for classrooms and offices for staff and faculty. Since the expiration of the lease on February 29th, the university is a month-to-month is -month tenant at the site at the current base rate of $946,440,000, something like that. Okay, a lease <laughs> renewal for the next 15 years for the approximate for the approximately 29,000 rentable square feet of space has been agreed upon with the following proposed terms. First five-year period not to exceed $858,400 per, per year. Uh, the second five-year lease not to exceed $916,400 per year. And the third five-year period not to exceed $974,400 per year. CUNY-wide multi-lease, the second Resolution, CUNY-wide multi-lease agreements. To authorize CUNY to enter into building lease agreements with various landlords to provide residential student housing options. 
The lease, agree the lease agreements will provide student housing options primarily for students attending Baruch, Hunter, and John Jay Colleges. A number of suitable exi existing housing facilities or apartments have been identified that may be leased in whole or in part. This resolution will provide CUNY with the flexibility to negotiate and act quickly on any of those opportunities that appear feasible. The cost of such leases will be covered by student rent payments or available college funds. No tax levy support will be required. The colleges will enter into license agreements with the students and collect rent for the full semester. The college will then make payments to the landlord on a monthly basis. Any such lease will be subject to review and approval by the Vice Chancellor for Facilities Planning, Construction and Management and the General Counsel. I hereby request your approval of these calendar items. Thank you. I'd like to second those items. Are there questions for the committee on either of these uh, leases? Uh, if not, all in favor please say aye. aye. Any opposed abstentions? Those items carry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That concludes my report. Thank you. I would like to note for the trustees uh, in connection with the Committee on Facilities, the remarkable, remarkable fact, at least remarkable to me, that CUNY now accounts for 20 percent of all the construction in the city of New York. <laughs> 20 percent. Um, <laughs> I'd like to move the uh, adoption of the uh, Salk Scholars that are listed uh, in your uh, meeting books. This is an annual recognition of some of our most outstanding um, students. May I have a second? Second. Are there questions? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? That carries. Uh, that concludes the uh, business of this uh, uh, public meeting. We'll now adjourn uh, and go into executive session. <laughs>